when do we use which number? When is it a 2 and when is it a 9? Or a 6 instead of a 13? Is there a rule to it? Yes, there is. I've often taught people who have confusion over this, so I'm going to try and do my best to clear this up. I've also made a free PDF for you, if that's your jam. Link is in the description. In music theory, we like to put numbers on stuff, on intervals, chords, chord tones. Let's talk about chord tones. Chord tones are just the notes within our chord. In a basic triad, we have our root, our third, and fifth. They're the chord tones of our basic C major triad. Now, any chord at its most basic and fundamental level is just a root, a third, and a fifth. And when all we have is those chord tones, we don't need to add anything else to our chord symbol. But then we start to learn about some more exotic and interesting chords. And these chords have extra numbers at the end of their chord symbols. Now, these extra numbers are instructions or indicators of extra notes that we can add to our original root, third, and fifth of our chord, or what alterations we might make to those notes. Now, at the risk of stating the obvious, these extra nodes are referencing chord tones. So let's take a closer look at our chord tones and how we number them. Let's start with our old faithful C major chord. I'm sure you're aware that the C in our C major chord is the root note or the tonic. Now, we could call this the one. We could number it the one, but we don't tend to. Typically, it's regarded as the tonic or the root. So C is our root. E is our three or our third. By the way, that's interchangeable calling it a three or a third, a five or a fifth, feel free to add the ordinal indicator. That's what it's called, an ordinal indicator. I googled it. Anyway, back to our chord. So the C and the E are the root and third of our C chord, and the G is the five or the fifth. And there we have the fundamental triad assigned. Now, as you can probably guess, we could fill in the gaps. And we could call this our two, our four, and we could even go the whole hog, do the whole octave. We have the six and the seven. So that's all the notes within our key assigned a number, one through to seven. And the notes that aren't within our key, they would be assigned a sharp or a flat of their neighboring number, if that makes sense. You've probably come across a host of chord symbols that include some of these extra notes, the two, the four, the six, the seven. Now, some of these, simply all we do is we add those chord tones to our existing triad. And sometimes what we do is we replace one of our existing notes in our triad with one of those chord tones. So for example, chords like um, C2, C6, C7, what we do is we take our, our chord and we add the note into our triad. Now you actually might see this written as a C add to C add to, C2, they both mean the same thing. We're just adding the note into our triad, C2. C6 is the same. Take our triad and we add the six. C7, take our triad and we add the seven. Now sometimes you might come across chords that are like C sus2 or C sus4. And there what we're doing is we're taking the third, the E of our C chord and we're suspending it. That's what the sus stands for. We're suspending it and playing the two or the four, depending on what the chord symbol is. So C sus two would be suspend the third, play the two. C sus four would be suspend the third, play the four. So. Okay, so that stuff's fairly simple, I think. But now to the interesting stuff. We still see chord symbols that include nines, elevens, and thirteens. Now, how is that possible when we've already accounted for all of the notes? Well, there is some sense to it, and it goes back to how we build our chords. So obviously what's happening now is that we're counting above the octave. But what that means is we now have two numbers for the same note. So our ninth and our second are both the same note. Our eleventh and fourth are the same. Our thirteenth and our sixth are the same. So does that mean that a C6 is the same as a C13 when we're seemingly adding that A? Well, no, it's not the same, and I'll come on to that, but quickly I'm going to talk about how we build chords. If we look back at our C major chord, then we build this by starting with our root note and then adding other notes from our key in intervals of thirds, or we could think about it like skipping a note each time. So start on our C, and then we add the third and the fifth, and we stop there and we've got our triad, but we don't need to stop there. We could keep going. We could add our seventh, our ninth, our eleventh, our 13, and then we've got all the notes accounted for before we head back to our root note. 
Now, while we're here, it may be worth saying that we never see an 8, a 10, a 12, or 14, and that's because those notes are already accounted for in the previous octave. They're already part of our chord. Okay, so what's the difference between a 6 chord and a 13 chord, or a 9 chord and a 2 chord? Well, here's the long and short of it. Any chord symbol that has a number higher than 7 is indicating that it will include the chord tones beneath that number. So a C9 chord not only includes our root 3rd and 5th and the 9th, it also includes the 7th. So we could think of it from the top down, we could think of 9th, 7th, 5th, 3rd, root. Alternatively, a C2 chord just takes our triad and adds the 2, so there's no 7th. For those of you wondering why I played a B flat there instead of a B natural, it's because our extended chords work the same as our 7 chords. So I'm assuming you know the difference between a C7 and a C major 7. So C7, C with just a 7, tells us that that 7th is a flat 7. C major 7 tells us that that 7 is the diatonic 7 from our major key. Now the same is for extended chords. If it's a C9, it's telling us that that 7 within our chord is a flat 7. If it said C major 9, then it's telling us that it's a major 7. So actually the addition of that major, that word major, is just in reference to the 7th within our chord. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. So a C minor 11, for example. If we were creating C minor 11, we'd have our root 3rd, 5th, the 11th, obviously, but also the 9th and the 7th, too. Again, we could have worked back from the top. 11th, 9th, 7th, 5th, 3rd, root. So rather than having a chord symbol that said C, 7, 9, 11, we just call it a C11, and we know that we, we add those other notes in, too. Now, a common misunderstanding or assumption that I come across is that the reason we call it one number over the other number is because of the inversion that we're playing, or more specifically, the octave of the note in question. So, for example, if I was playing a C chord and I played the A here, it would be a C6. But if I played the C chord and played the A up here, it would be a C13. Now, that's not the case. I'm sure you appreciate that in harmony, how we move the notes and where we place the notes in our octaves and inversions is a fundamental part of, of harmony. And it doesn't at all compromise the, the integrity of the chord that we're playing. So, for example, the aforementioned C minor 11, I might play it like this. Now, here I've got my ninth below my third. I've got my 11th below my seventh. Still a minor 11 chord. C13, I might voice like this. I hear my 13 is below my 7, between my 3rd and 7th. So the inversion, or where we play things in the octave, doesn't at all affect the name of the chord. Now there's one other common chord that you may well have seen that I haven't really talked about, which is the add 9 chord. Now, I think the add 9 chord is confusingly and mistakenly called the add nine chord when really it should be an add two chord or just a two chord because all we're doing is adding that two or the nine to our triad we're not adding the seventh beneath it now i think this is linked to a common occurrence in music theory nearly all modern music and by that i mean music styles that were created in the last hundred years so jazz blues rock pop Funk, all that good stuff. Nearly all modern music was learned by word of mouth, by copying somebody, by watching and listening, listening to people play and working out how to do it. And then they learn it, or they absorb it in a way that makes sense to that person. They can organize it in a way that makes sense to them. And then they probably teach it in a way that makes sense to them. Unlike classical music, which has a fairly established music theory history, that has generally been agreed upon and followed for hundreds of years, I think modern music is a bit different. And I think within that, chord symbols are actually, in the grand scheme of things, quite a new thing. And because of the way that we've learned music and understood the theory from our own perspectives, it's meant that we ended up having variations of the same thing. Now, I think that most things in modern music have been absorbed and into a conformed, agreed-upon way of doing things, but I do think that chord symbols is something that we still see 
variations of. So getting back to my initial point, I do think that the agreed upon convention for chord naming and chord symbols is what I've already laid out in this video. But if you do see an add symbol before a chord tone, then what that's telling you is that you're just adding that chord tone to the existing triad, not any of the chord tones beneath it. Okay, and we'll leave it there. I know there are plenty of people who've had this question about this subject. Hopefully you're one of those people and I've found this to be useful. Thanks for being here.